First into the den is German entrepreneur Maxim Gelman. I've always wanted to do a business with something that I can leave a legacy on, that I can be proud of that I've done it. He thinks he's applied his nationality's flair for precision engineering to come up with a solution to a global problem. Macaroni straws? Oh, look like pasta straws. Mm. Yeah. I kind of saw the big impact this can have and the simplicity of the idea as like a straw rather than just a piece of pasta. So five billion plastic straws in the UK. We're banning them, aren't we? Yeah. So I think the dragons, they'll see the potential in terms of giving them a return, because at the end of the day, that's what they're after. And having some fun, hopefully, so I can give them both. Hi, dragons. My name is Maxim, and I'm better known as Mr. Strudels, the founder of Strudels, the pasta straws. I'm here to offer you 5% of my business in exchange for 40,000 pounds. Did you know that in the UK, over 1 million straws are consumed per hour? That's about 8 to 1.5 billion straws per year. Globally, it's an industry worth over $4.5 billion and still growing. That's why the EU and most recently the UK have decided to ban single-use plastic items by April 2020 and the plastic straw has become the face of it all. And what did the industry give us? They gave us that paper straw that we're all not happy about because it goes soggy after 10 to 15 minutes. So, dragons, what's the answer? Strudels is the answer. <laughs> Strudels is a pasta straw. It's 100% biodegradable, and even if it ends up in the ocean, it makes for a nice appetizer for the fish. Over the last six and a half months of trading, Strudels has generated over 9,000 pounds, selling over 110,000 Strudels to retail and business customers across Europe. In retail, we sell on our own website, our pop-up shop in London, and we sell on prices competitive with paper. And now, dear dragons, I'd like to invite you to join the Strudels movement by strudling a lovely smoothie. Here you go, please help yourself. Hoping to change the world with his straws made out of pasta... Don't be shy. Thank you. ..is Maxim Gelman. Excellent. I get my first choice. It's fine. Don't worry about me. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about you, me. You're, you're at the end, sorry. It's fine. He's looking for a £40,000 investment in return for 5% of his business. Since summer. No, it's no. good. Continue eating it. Go for it. I'm just wanting to put it through its paces. You go in full zero waste. It's fine. To Kasuliman is first to question the pasta pioneer about his product. Maxim. Yes. I just want to know whether you have a business that I can make money out of rather than a dream. I have a dream, but I also have a business. So at the moment, you've got distributors, you've got online, you've got... And a pop-up in London. And a pop-up and blah, 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 blah. But you only have £9,000. Yes, um, I, there, there's a very clear answer for that. So at the moment, it's mainly me setting up all the infrastructure. I've now put everything in place that once investment comes in, I can press those buttons. OK, so you've got the investment. Yes. What will the next 12 months sales look like? So year one, I project 930,000 pounds. How much? 930,000. So you're going to go from 9,000 to 930,000? Yes. What's the gross profit? 350,000. And what's the net profit? Ne negative 250,000. Negative? Yeah, we'll make a loss in the first year. So my 40,000 is not going to go far. Let me put that into perspective for you. I'm not saying I'm going to get McDonald's as a customer, but a customer of that size goes with over one and a half million straws per day. So it's only one or two chains. Their volumes is going to high rocket my numbers. The entrepreneur attempts to blow Tuka Suleiman's concerns about his sales aside with some stratospheric projections. But Peter Jones doesn't seem to share Maxim's confidence in his calculations. You've come in here on a wing and a prayer. You've literally just got a few strudels out and you're saying that you're not just pre-revenue almost, you're pre-seeing a customer, you're pre-everything and yet you think you can walk in here and just wing it. Um, no, I, I have, basically, I have customers, retail customers, that are obviously buying from me. But anybody can do this. I, I give you two reasons why, or like multiple... I prefer when you give me two reasons you don't do that. 
Oh, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to. I'll keep my hands here. So basically, in the process, to produce my straw, someone wants to put that in place, it's a lot of uh, time and money. Yeah, but if somebody like McDonald's they wanted to do it, they just do it. They don't need you. Yeah, but then that's one customer. There's still four and a half billion dollar market globally. No, 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 it's not. The straw market. No, that, that, this is not the straw market. This is a completely different product to replace straws. You say that, but then at the moment, the market opportunity is there's regulation coming in where every single establishment has to comply and get rid of um, plastic. So I'm offering them something which is superior to paper and the customer gets an experience. This is a talking point in restaurants. But you've been going quite a while now and you've sold 9,000 pounds worth of product. Yes, but... So it might be a talking point, but it's not resulting in sales, is it? Despite Maxim's best efforts to convince him otherwise, Peter Jones discovers holes in the size of the market opportunity. Now, tycoon turned conservationist Deborah Meaden wants to dig deeper into the entrepreneur's assertions of sustainability. What's the full environmental impact of wheat mm. pasta versus paper? So basically, this biodegrades in a day, unless you've I'm eaten... I'm not just talking about biodegrade. So fish have lots of problems. We're chucking plastic at them. We're also chucking a load of fertiliser at them. So the amount of crop that we're growing is also being taken into account in terms of mm -hmm. switching from an unsustainable product to a sustainable product. Sure. Otherwise, all we're doing is moving the plastic problem into fertiliser, pesticides and chemicals. So I'm going to grill you on this because this is your sole selling point. What are the environmental credentials of wheat versus paper? Well, from that perspective, yes, I haven't done a supply chain analysis of like what happens. It's like it's just like from. Okay, from, from, I'm going to stop you no, there. No, 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 I'm going to stop okay. you there because you won't get through the door unless you will. They are moving for one reason. This is bad. So the next step we take when we have this massive disruption to our market mm. better be the right one. So I want you to tell me why your product is better than this. You can't tell me. I, I can tell you on the basis that in a, in a paper straw there is obviously glues and there is still coating be, being applied in the cheap ones. What you can't do, by the way, is come into the den and start answering a different question when you actually clearly to me have not done an environmental study. You should know this market. <laughs> Particularly, by the way, when you're valuing your business at £800,000. Boy, am I not going to cut you any slack on that. Maxim. I, uh, no. Sorry. So, I won't be investing. I'm out. Deborah Meaden reaches boiling point over Maxim's lack of evidence on the sustainability of his pasta product. As the entrepreneur goes one dragon down, can Sarah Davies see any market potential in the imminent ban on plastic straws? Given the deadline of April next year, surely this is a problem that every man and his dog's trying to solve at the moment. Yeah. And to get this off the ground, you need someone like one of us on board to open the door and make use of our contacts. You haven't made this sweet for us as an investor, Yet you need us to make this whole business viable. But look, what I, what I want to get across is that just one or two of those big chains is going to catapult me to that space. Yeah, but if you actually think that's going to happen, you are just living in cuckoo land. I just think it's not even a business and it's definitely not a one for me today and, and I'm out. Maxon. I just think that there's nothing really right with this business. It makes no sense for me to put money in here. So unfortunately, I'm not going to invest today, so I'm out. You need to stop. You need to stop this dream because you or somebody else is going to lose a lot of money. And I'm scared about telling you to think of another idea because God knows what you're going to come up with next. However, I love your passion, your enthusiasm, the way you sell something. You've got that skill, which is great. But this is no nearer an answer to your fortune in the future. When you look at the loss that you're forecasting to make before the business even starts, this is not an investment for me today. And for that reason, I'm out. 
three more dragons say Auf Wiedersehen to Maxim and his solution for pollution. Only the den's wild card remains. Can Tuka Suleiman see a potential in the pasta straw that his peers could not? Ah, leaves us to it. <laughs> and the last one. This is a prime example of somebody who has a great idea to solve a problem. However, you're going to lose £250,000 in the first year of other people's money. So I put £32,000 more in. Like, I would like, for example, if you would come in on £40,000, if you need to match me... Um... Can I be honest with you? If I came in at £40,000, I want half the business. I'd love that offer to go now. <laughs> You'd love the offer? <laughs> yeah, make the offer. I'd want 50% of the business. Is that an offer? For what you presented, it goes against all common sense investments. And for that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Good luck. A unanimous rejection from the dragons leaves the entrepreneur to think what was the straw that broke the camel's back of his pitch. And he exits the den without the investment he was looking for. I nearly invested at 50%. Tuka, you could be business partners with him. <laughs> Tuka, seriously, you've invested in worse. <laughs> <laughs> Although I really value Peter, I don't think it was fair to say that I should stop because I know I have a marked opportunity, I know I have potential, so what the future holds is basically I'm going to continue my journey. All I can say at the end, it's pasta la vista, plastic straws. <laughs>